paint and we're going to continue from the last time of us uh, painting a miniature we're using this new setup for those of you who's just kind of uh, drawing back to what we were doing so you can see my wet palette and again still be able to see my painting habits of how i'm uh, tinning my paints and drawing my brushes over here and how i'm cleaning it and then over here you guys can see that from the main camera the miniature that i have uh, down here is the paints and the brushes that I have, the reference, and then the color chroma. So if you've watched the earlier videos, then you've kind of seen uh, at some point how the miniature actually looked fairly well under the uh, the airbrush light box that I had. And when we use this different lighting setup, especially since there's daylight coming in from beyond over here, then we can see that ew, some of the colors have essentially become a lot more faded. You can see more flaws. And we can definitely see more problems from the bottom side of the miniature. And this is done on purpose because we want to paint our grays and we paint our darks. And we have the different lighting set up. The colors become a lot more saturated and it, the lighting is doing the darks for, is, is creating our shadows for us. And we don't want that. We want to have a much more um, faithful uh, interpretation of what we are painting towards um what I have in my mind anyways and we're gonna take it step by step and so you guys get to see all the flaws that I go through in this as I figure it out because this is not a color scheme and a uh, that I'm familiar with okay so we have the dongle invoker and let's just get over the painting so the first thing that we will work on for today I <laughs> forgot I need to put on my reading glasses otherwise I can't see anything okay so um the okay so what we're gonna work on today specifically is the we're gonna clean off um oh on this cat fur uh, clean off whatever there is on the face and then blend it out and we're really gonna make it refined because at this stage we need to make sure that the entire bit uh comes together and we see from the last time we actually pumped up the grace a little bit and now that it's dry we can see that it's lightened up a little bit and we want to preserve our darks and while we also do want to make sure that we get the lighting uh, from these pieces a little bit more uh, accurately so it kind of zones off right so let's just kind of take that we do our grace first before we do any of the finer details so let's just go ahead and do this oops making sure that the miniature is in shot and then I'm going to Blend it in, the yellow, according to the shapes. It's the shapes that we're looking after. We're not really looking for the, to follow the contour, which is the, um, we're not look, looking to the sculpture to define how we're going to paint our, uh, uh, our colors. We're going to actually create shapes based on the light and shadows, and also going to create shapes based on, well, what I, think would be probably be interesting okay so that's always how I've kind of worked and so that's how I prefer wet blending my paints even on traditional even digital so I just kind of we're just kind of go through this way now I've gotten a lot of um, feedback from people I think I mentioned in the last session that people were telling me to why don't I glaze my paints and why do I wet blend everything and it you know because it looks really a lot more messy well first off uh, I do admit that me figuring stuff out while I'm recording behind this uh, camera and YouTube video, like it's not particularly easy because I'm actually looking at uh, through this smartphone that I have that's rec recording what's going on. And so it's a bit of a challenge for me to get used to doing this um, as I'm painting for uh, viewership and for camera. Uh, viewership I mean for other people can be able to see how I paint clearly and it, you know it's, it's, it's not that comfortable and so that's for me practicing and that's taking time however the other bits is that mm, it's actually pretty important for me to get wet blending uh, to the extreme on the miniature because I'm at a point where I'm pretty comfortable with it on the canvas 
and when you get to a point where you're really good with wet blending um, in, in painting terms it's just called wet on wet so you're just putting paints on other paints while the paint is still wet it hasn't dried yet and it is actually when you get the accurate colors um, really quick over time once you've mastered these techniques you save a lot more time than if you didn't and you can do a lot more complicated blend set techniques so it's a win-win for a skill that is um, not ridiculously accessible to a lot of people because of the challenge there's a lot of challenges that comes to wet blending or wet on wet in particular oh, hold on I need to oh sorry about that um, I had to Sorry about that, I had to go and uh, make sure I let my cat into my room it's because um, I can't really leave her alone after the surgery still there's still a lot of training for habits uh, over time like her meals and her patterns anyways, so coming back to painting uh, the last time we were talking about wet blending and um, kind of like the process and the benefits of it the main benefits of wet blending is that you're able to get these really minute uh, blends on a miniature so let me kind of show you here for example let's say her shirt and no, no, <laughs> a dress my bad so see how this these small little um, moments in color these small little moments in color where we go from a, a green to a much more blue to a small little magenta and then there's moments inside where there are darks and then this it goes into the lights in this way and it flows into the uh the um uh the the rank what <laughs> the, the this oh jeez i can't remember what this calls uh, what, what those are called uh, in english oh well uh wrinkles those wrinkles in the clothing wow <laughs> my brain just completely lagged there that's hilarious okay so um so so yeah it, it those, those wrinkles in the clothing and the small little changes from yellow that when we swap over the turn around the, the miniature it goes into like this green and this kind of like cyan and so this kind of blends is what you can accomplish using wet blending and when you use wet blending in this way you don't need to spend as much time glazing so you you know I haven't actually taken like a month just focus on painting this miniature right because essentially the miniature is going to be this small anyways and so a lot of the information that we're doing in minute detail over here is going to be well preserved because <laughs> nobody's going to look at it that close at least uh, not at the stage where I am yet so let's just kind of continue where we're blending and oh man it's like uh, these early videos on my YouTube channel is probably going to be quite target for criticism which I'm actually pretty comfortable with I don't mind I don't mind it at all because uh, it's actually kind of part of my journey. Now, I'm just kind of continuing in this way, and we want to make sure that um, we get our darks and we make sure we get the grays in there accurately. So, we need a little bit more yellow in here. We're kind of really slowly working those yellows in. We don't want to, so we don't want to shock the the color saturation at all for the uh, darks that we've kind of already built up so we're working this way and so well, let's talk about the challenges of wet blending okay. so the bigger challenges of wet blending are you need to kind of estimate the saturation of the paints before it dries so that requires a lot of studying in uh, how paints work and how colors work and so you can see how I'm just kind of going at it real slowly and I do believe that it's become a little bit more too, a little bit too bright over here so I'll need to add just a little bit of turquoise at the top and then we'll need to blend it out slowly And there's small little tints under that of magenta that I want to keep. So I want to make sure that this wet on wet is really loose. I'm definitely going to make some shorter form YouTube videos. I think that was what was requested by me. Some 
um, by a couple of uh, buddies who um, mentioned to me that the these videos are like hard to understand right now for most people who come into miniature painting. So I'm still going to produce this series first because uh, it's important to kind of leave behind uh, a blog of how I was, I was exploring these ideas and I think that's pretty important. Just later on if uh, in the future if anybody wants to see how my learning process is um, when I've already kind of like went through the learning process and there won't be as many mistakes and there won't be as many steps in between so it'd be a lot more better for people who are new to kind of escape through and figure that one out okay so we kind of figure out darks and we just kind of double check over here and how does it look like it looks pretty good so we're going to continue and we're going to add that magenta over here because we're going to add a yellow so we're going to make sure that we get enough magenta over on this area here and it's magenta magenta so they can be really seen but the magenta is wet so the moment we put on this yellow pop 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 up until there that's all that we need and then we're going to thin it out and blend it right on the miniature slowly slowly There we go. There we go. And then we are going to add a little bit more magenta. Okay. There we go. We also want to add a little bit more turquoise to show the darkness in the middle. Making sure that darkness is done. Over here, magenta. There we go. Okay. Now, we want to make sure to add back that uh, cyan from before. Just about over here. Really softly. Right. Add just a little bit of yellow. Not too much. We want to make sure we be extremely careful about that. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, now we can add more yellow at the bottom of the feet here because this part needs a lot more intense yellow to the mixture. One over here as well, that's fine. Okay, there we go. Now we are going to actually blend that in really slowly. There we go. So I really like these blends, how they're coming out underneath here. Okay, you can see there's kind of like a flutter. And we need to make sure we make a turquoise, like it blends into a turquoise over here. So it's not too, too rash, like the colors don't feel like that suddenly. Whoa, it's so bright. Take some slow dry medium and then we'll blend it real softly in. I actually really like these small subtle magenta hues. Like this green is not becoming too green because it's in the shadows. So there's a reason why we had that dark magenta coat underneath at the beginning. And now here needs to have a little bit of brightness, so we will actually place some teal here. some teal here and then some skin tone there we go so we can get that blend and then we're gonna add some cyan to darken it primary cyan we're gonna work our way down like so into the darks of the miniature notice how after being desaturated the yellow goes away a little bit that's how we are restoring we're gonna make sure to restore that uh that yellow and green and um, wet on wet well I actually used to hate painting in this way when I was a lot more younger I used to avoid painting when I was younger especially because when you when you learn painting traditionally 
traditionally initially it's all wet on wet so um like it's not dry because in canvas painting you have to um especially in terms of reserve time as it, at least in my field of schooling anyways so And well, I can understand that people tend to move towards glazing when it comes to painting miniatures. Because miniatures are pretty small things that like you can you shouldn't try to be you should try to be more as accurate as you can in placing down the paints. But um I found that accuracy will be built over time as long as you keep your mind on the subject of making it um making it accurate but if you don't really expand yourself to use techniques that are that look pretty out of control at the beginning like how I'm doing that it's going to be a lot more hard to try to implement them later on so I'm going in an extreme and yeah, I'm fine with it we're going to see how I can maneuver and control it over time because that's the interesting aspect of seeing if I can grow into the ability of manipulating these paints in this way or not well and I won't see the results early and that's fine okay okay so we can see that there's a small yellow tinge and we probably want to make sure to highlight this part of yellow a little bit more over here at the side like this a bit more see so how it fades into the and then we are going to add some magenta back in there because it's going to be defined by the clothing so it's okay if it's a little green more magenta I'm gonna push back that, that green and yellow. It's being highlighted. There we go. So we have our grays mostly determined now. And let me see what else may be missing. No, that we, we need that for our undercoat. So we need a dry first. So now we just come to the face, right? So we will zoom in a little bit and then we see. Ew. So the last time we we painted this, it was looking okay, yeah, but we're working with really thin paints now, so we need to do it step by step. And I need some burnt umber, or at least the burnt umber that I mixed in with my inks in here. And then just a teeny little bit of black, not that much at all, but just a little bit of black. And then we're going to place that. Um, but this, this brush is too wet So you're gonna place, place that onto the bottom of the chin The bottom lip right here Okay, and zoom out Set just a little bit more Black but umber Take our paint put down here Okay we're gonna leave that to dry for now. Oh, actually, um, we'll definitely need a little bit more. So I'm just gonna really dag on, dry those paints, and dry that brush. Take on just enough. And if I need to add on a little bit more paints later on, I will, but for now, this is just enough for me. There we go. Got the black where we want it, and over here as well. Okay, and we want to make sure we get the uh, get this skin color on the top of the eyelid because it didn't seem like it registered the last time. Let's just uh, zoom in a bit. Too much. Too thin. When it's too thin, this is what happens. 
If you need to fix anything, the throw will fix it. It's no big deal. Okay. He's de definitely working to paint that eye is um, really challenging with this camera in front of my face. It's the one thing that's uh, pretty challenging in this process of painting with on video. I do believe it will pay off. As long as I keep at it and I keep working towards it. Okay. You can always just fix it and things later on. For now, that's okay. You gotta remember that the lights are coming from bottom here, so it's not going to look like that. Okay. Um. Next one, we need to blend. It's oops. To be careful about that. Okay. So let's see. It's drying now. This is actually pretty okay. You can just put a little bit more. Oh, I can actually use this brush now. I love it. I can use this uh, Princeton Mini Detailer 3050DG. And we can actually add more teal now. Like so. There we go. Some cyan over here. Kind of make that transition as smooth as we can. If it's fine, it's a little bit messy at the start. Everything starts a little bit messy at the start. This way. Push that turquoise up. Push it into the crevices. There we go. And then we will just want to add just a little bit of uh, yellow. And we're going to blend it upwards. Now that we've kind of gotten a better idea about how it dries in this area. I'm just going to stifle that. Take it slow. <laughs> Take it extremely slow. Okay, there we go. We have our gradient. And we will definitely um, tune that off. Darken it off later. Not now yet. Uh, let me see. Is that? Yep, that's actually working really well for us. Okay, let's uh, come back to this bottom here because I need to blend off this um, this part of the uh, miniature. So I'll do that. Take some teal, dampen it here. Remember that we're working in darks. I'm gonna make sure to keep that magenta underneath. You don't want to blow that magenta out of the. Uh, a view so we're being extremely careful about there's some skin color over here because there'll be a lack of color on this side so keep that in mind I also probably need to draw the sleeve later on gotta remind myself of that let's just go ahead and put this on skin color because this part will mostly be desaturated like there won't be any colors this is too much in the dark and then we'll go ahead and add some magenta to the mix and then put it on like this okay and after it dries it will desaturate a little bit there we go there we go okay uh, let's put a little bit more. There we go. Don't need much more magenta than that. And there we go. Okay. Steel. Which we need now. So we'll take out teal. And draw on that teal on this end. Mm 
doing that again over here okay and then over here we definitely can see there's too much uh there's not enough yellow going on from this angle so we are going to sink down this like so should be able to see that and we're going to dab on just enough yellow that creates a shape towards the light okay just a little bit more there we go okay we're gonna make sure that we put on more greens here more teal we're gonna leave that to dry now let's double check our miniature how the darks are definitely could use a little bit more magenta underneath there so we can do that now boop, 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 boop. a lot more magenta and this magenta will kill this turquoise a little bit by sending it off in the blue spectrum there we go okay and we can gray it out just a smidget by adding some skin color just sufficiently if we had orange we could do put orange there as well which is why I'm putting on the skin color because it's the closest thing on my palette to orange okay and that is desaturated sufficiently for the time being okay what else do we need to paint our place our paints oh, the color spectrum is really going well okay now let's see about that face for a moment we have to make sure that we get everything right and we can always come back to it later it's not a big deal over here it's too dark so I'm going to actually bring my light over and then see if I can I can get something closer. So there we go. So I feel light over here to kind of cast on this uh, darker end to just double check the colors. And it's the colors that I want, so I'm going to leave it aside. Um, what else? Oh yeah, so this part. We've kind of ignored most of uh, this part of the miniature. Which is not good, so we're kind of correct that now. And the darkest part of the miniature will actually be by underneath the sleeve because it's directly underneath the light. So we need to actually put on it quite black there, and we will put a turquoise tint underneath. That brown will actually do most of the work for us, but we're gonna make sure we get that darkened like this. You can see how it's sort of kind of like. Uh, binding the miniature together all those colors that we placed on underneath so let's just go ahead and do a little bit more whoops too much let's just put some slow dry medium on the top because I do want to mix that turquoise in afterwards I don't want it to be too too dry okay okay then we're gonna add some turquoise. This turquoise is really thick, and we just kind of put it in there. Oh, there we go. It's the turquoise is now kind of in the dark blue area, which is really good. This is the color that we actually want. And let's just make sure that it's sufficient enough turquoise in this portion, like so. And then we're going to fade that off with a bit of magenta towards the bottom here there we go we'll clean up a bit later on and then we want to make sure to take a bit of teal and do us a little bit of blending in this way for that part we just want to get the colors in there that's sufficient it doesn't need to take over we can leave a little bit streak of darkness Right, so there we go. That way it fades into the dark. Get a little bit more. Finally getting to do all these nice color shifts. 
it's on the surface and let it kind of bind together and for those tassels um those tassels is actually where we will we might add orange actually i want to avoid adding any kind of orange for the miniature um because even the orange for the hair is not wasn't orange that i placed on it's uh or is that mixed using magenta and yellow? Okay, so let's uh, some, kind of summarize what we went over today. We kind of binded all the colors on the miniature. We changed our lighting so we can see the darks a little bit better. And we are in a place where this miniature is... The values are mostly correct, except for the sword and this hand is really bugging me. The, those darks are neat there, still needing what's left but you can see that there's a saturation that goes from desaturated to saturated both on these two ends right and so we definitely need to fix stuff here and there along the way um, to blend a little bit more and I really trust my process so I'm actually happy about it because it's definitely coming to get in the way I want it all right so let's uh, stop the episode right over here and continue on to the next and take care